All right, and welcome back. Hope you're having a good day. First week of school. I haven't made videos all week. I might try to start putting out a couple a week. But work can be, uh, school can be exhausting. I don't know. I don't really want to talk about school all that much, but I really do like the kids. I enjoy being around them again and everything, but boy, I hate doing a bunch of paperwork for nothing and going to meetings for nothing. Uh, I gotta find something else to do for a living. I wish I could just play with plants and stuff. But anyway, today I'm gonna repop this uh, Portulacaria Afra or a little dwarf jade. Uh, it's just a little cutting. I actually, this, uh, I've been keeping it in this pot inside of a pot here or whatever, just kind of holding it upright for a little while. It's in a little tiny pot. But, uh, Ports, you know, which I just call them for short. Ports really are the one of the most, I think, misunderstood, and people just have so many different ideas about them. Some people say you can work the root balls really hard. Some people say you can't. All kinds of different ways people take cuttings. But I'm going to talk about taking cuttings here. I'm not going to take any small ones today. I might save a couple of the big ones. I'm going to cut this thing down quite a bit. But first, I'm going to whack this down first off quite a bit so it just starts standing up. So I don't have to keep holding it up and keep it from falling over while I'm talking. But first I'll talk about uh, taking smaller cuttings. And, you know, for me, I mean, a cutting like this, I mean, I used to take cuttings like this. But a cutting like this, I mean, 100%, I could get this to live. I, there's no chance that if I tried to get this to live, it would die or whatever. But I'd pull off, I'd pull off these leaves on the bottom. And I take and just stick it deep enough in the soil to keep it from tipping over. And then you want to stick it in dry soil and keep it from tipping over. Just just deep enough to keep it from tipping over. And then never water it until you see new growth. Not until you see this growing, but until you actually see new growth coming along. All these leaves will shrivel up, and then you'll see new growth starting in the node in each node. And then that's when you start watering it. Now you could also just leave this sit and let the end dry. Some people do that too. I've done that as well. But on ones these small, it's really not necessary. It's definitely necessary on a bigger one, but really all that not all that necessary on the smaller ones. Now when I start uh, getting into... Actually, I'm going to show you some old pictures of what this used to look like. This was a cutting probably about this size about a year and a half ago. And I let it go. Uh, I didn't prune it at all until September 2020. I planted it early 2020, probably February or March, or you know, took the cutting in February or March 2020. And you'll see these pictures here of September 2020, when it was just kind of blowing over a bunch, and you know, that was that's the beginning of our fall when we get our uh, a lot more windy times and everything. And so I just cut it, and then this spring I cut it a little bit. I had been letting it root itself into the ground. I cut it a little bit. Some of the plants around it were kind of crowding it out and everything. And then that side just started setting it in here to keep it up rather than letting it root in the ground or whatever. But uh, if I was to take a thicker cutting, like say, I don't know, like this guy, because I'm going to make this really small before I replant it. Like this one here, I would, I would let that just sit, you know, someplace dry, someplace in the shade, um, for... I don't know, a week or two or whatever, I'd wait until I saw that really got all brown, you know, brown on there. I might even save this one. I kind of, I mean, at this point, I have enough. Although, I mean, now that the cat's out of my bag with my students knowing about my YouTube channel, I get a bunch of them telling me, give me a bonsai tree, give me a bonsai tree. Well, I mean, if I'm going to give you a bonsai tree, it's going to be a little cutting or something, but... And so, I'm going to go ahead and kind of treat it like I am going to take it. I'm not really sure if I am or not. Sometimes you get so much, it's just hard to take care of what you got. And I would actually probably even cut off that piece there. And then it wouldn't be so top heavy. I let that callus over because what you're doing there is you're just preventing rot. Right now, a succulent stores water, so that's all wet. 
and you guys probably can't see it, but when I touch that, my finger actually comes out wet because that's what succulents do. They store water. I'd let that, you know, get, get all calloused over. It'll kind of brown up a little bit. All the leaves would shrivel. And then I would stick it in bone dry, bone dry uh, soil. And like I said, just deep enough to keep it from tipping over and everything. And then no water until you see new growth. Now, as, as, as you know, this is actually not a small cutting, but these things do shrivel up when they start losing all their water. Which is why I, you know, may or may not save it because by the time it shrivels up and actually starts growing, it'll just be, you know, the appearance of a little cutting again. But I am going to set this off to the side just in case. I'll probably just throw away all these little ones that I cut and everything. But now that I got this down to a better size to handle just as I repot it, I'm just kind of, whenever I do, not 100% sure. But, you know, now I'm going to just kind of see what the roots look like. I mean, it's been in this little tiny thing. This is just a little pot that I bought. And I, what does it say here? I would have had a little small aloe in here when I bought it or whatever. But, you know, from letting it go like that, the stump got pretty big. And what I want to do is I want to start working on getting better nabari in a lot of my plants. I don't really have a lot of, you know, I, I have a lot of good plants, a lot of good ficus. But... I really didn't pay much, all that much attention to the roots when I first started, which is one of the things that they tell you on the forums is you got to start with the roots. Starting to bleed them a little bit, but the plant world is not absolute. absolute. You got to do what fits you and everything. So, all right, so I'm going to pull it up, see what the roots look like. Probably I'm going to put it in this spot here. I put most of my port, ports in terracotta just because they don't really have to be. You don't really need them to hold water all that much in the terracotta like when it rains too much the terracotta actually helps pull some of that uh, moisture out but i also had been keeping a lot of the, the uh, ports in like regular potting mix and i'm going to put this in uh, uh, some good substrate here so i'll put it in here plus it's a little bit wider than the uh than the terracotta parts parts and i am trying to see if i can get a wide nabari so here it is about a year and a half cutting in the pot and here we go and again when I was talking about the conflicting uh, oh by the way before I go any further you'll see all kinds of little fertilizer balls in here ports are like about the only plant that I've got anyway I know that you can just fertilize the crap out of them as long as they're getting the rain and the sun they will just grow and grow and grow I don't even think you could put enough fertilizer on them to burn it up. Got to be careful with fertilizer. You only want to do it a few times a year, except for with these guys, which, especially in Florida, I mean, I don't fertilize in December or January or anything, but other than that, I pretty much fertilize year-round, and I fertilize a lot. So now this, this root ball is pretty solid, and that's, uh, you know, getting into some of the conflicting information that you see is that, you know, oh, they hate having their roots worked on. Oh, you got to comb the roots out. I think that they do hate having their roots worked on, but I also don't want to just put it in there like that either. I don't want to just do that because then I know I just got this round ball of potting soil here, but I don't want to do like I do with the ficuses and, you know, and have a, a you know, take it outside and take the garden hose to it or anything like that. I just kind of want to break it up a little bit and it probably isn't going to be very happy for a few months, but... Again, sometimes you just never know until you try. I've never really let one get this pot bound in that small of a situation there. Usually I'm rushing things and trying to get it, you know, all pruned up and nice and everything. So, you know, it's got a decent sized trunk for, you know, letting it grow out twice like that. Really kind of almost three times because I did give it a quick prune this spring. It's always a little bit more dense than I remember trying to pot it in. See, it's got a lot of roots there. That was almost all roots right up against the uh, pot there. That's where it was just kind of leaning on the edge. Try and see if I can get some of those to spread that way before I put it, you know, out that way before I put it in the training pot here. Just don't want it that dense. does have one really long 
taproot there was small, so I was able to, I mean, that wasn't a taproot. It's a succulent. They don't really get taproots, but, or at least that I've seen. There's a couple more that I'm going to go ahead and take. I wasn't, uh, this is, I mean, one of the times is this was not what I was thinking I'd find. Thought I'd find a little more of a solid stump instead of all this dense potting soil. I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't really, uh, like I said, I don't want to wash it off and everything. These, I really do think they hate that. I've seen some of the people in Australia say that they mess with theirs all the time. I think their climate's a little bit better than here. I think they don't like it that much here because of how humid it is. And there's the only time you're ever going to lose one of these in Florida is to uh, is to is to rot. And I think you could set one of these off to the corner and forget to water it all winter. And I think as long as you got it someplace where it get a little bit of water in the summer, I think it bounced right back. So, wasn't planning on trimming any of the roots, but I did. So that means now when I put it back out, I do not want to, I will not water this. This is kind of damp-ish soil, so I, I want to just let it go in the new good substrate. I want to let it, uh, <clears throat> want to let it, first off, the substrate will suck all the water out of that little bit of wet potting soil around the edges. Then it'll start taking all the wetness from the leaves and everything. And then that's actually, as it's taking that out, that'll actually draw roots into it. And then as soon as it gets rooted in, I'll see the new growth. And as soon as I see the new growth, I'll put it back out there where I can get some rain. And better sun. I mean, that's one thing. I, I wish I had a, uh, a spot where I could put these in the full sun, but with no rain. And that'll be about it. Probably leave it just like this for like at least another two years. This time though, instead of just letting it go, I, I you know I won't do anything with the roots, but I will start trimming it, try to get a little shape to it or whatever. Really don't know if I'll keep this this branch off of it or not. I might even take the bigger one off and just kind of let it go that way out the smaller way, but for now I'll just kind of let it go, let it recover, and then just as soon as this recovers, start trying to think about what kind of style I want to make it one day or whatever, but thanks for watching.